Hello everyone, this is Miss Wallace. I'm just going to talk you through a few important bits of legal language to get you started for when you join us in September to study BTEC Applied Law. As you can see, the title of this is Getting Ready for Level 3. So you've been doing Level 2 qualifications for GCSE and BTECs and what you're now going to do is Level 3 qualifications be that A levels, B techs, or a combination of the two. One of the things that people always struggle with in law is getting hold of the legal language and being able to use it appropriately and accurately. And it's a very, very important skill. So the idea of today is to introduce you to some of the key terms to get you started. Our objectives for this session are to be able to identify key legal terms for both civil and criminal law. As you can see at the bottom of the screen there, there these are two different types of law. We'll be studying both of them. You also need to be able to select and use the correct legal terms when discussing the law. The better that you can do this, the higher the marks that you end up achieving. So the first thing to do is to have a look at the words on the left. These are all very common words that we find in law across both criminal and civil law. What I would like you to do is pause this PowerPoint and just write down any of the definitions that you know or think you know of those words. It doesn't matter if you're not sure, just write down what you think. OK, so pause now and start again once you're ready. Welcome back. So you might have just put down one, two, three. You might have a lot of understanding of these. What I'd like you to do, though, is to make sure that you check to see if you've got them right. So, for example, guilty would be the verdict or one of the verdicts, possibly in a criminal case. OK, so that would be the definition of guilty in a law sense. Please go and see if you can check the rest. So what is the difference between civil and criminal law and why does it matter? Well, it matters because they are two completely different areas of law. What you generally see in the news and on TV, in TV shows like um, Coronation Street, if you watch that, is you generally see criminal law being spoken about and that is the, the phraseology that you will be used to but the reality is that most law that happens on a day-to-day -day basis and if you go into a legal career the chances are that you will actually be doing civil law rather than criminal law criminal is actually a relatively small part of the legal system civil law is much much bigger so it's very important that you understand the differences because we use different terminology um, for different situations. And there are also different procedures for this as well. In year 12, you will be studying two units. So we have unit one and unit two. Unit one is the civil law unit. So you will look at an introduction to civil law and then you will look at part of civil law, which is negligence in our case. That is the unit you will sit an exam on at the end of year 12. At the same time, you would be studying for a criminal law unit with your other teacher, and that is unit two. Now, that's for coursework in year 12, but again, different types of law, you need to understand the differences. So, when you are dealing with either criminal or civil law, who actually starts a case? How do we get the ball rolling? How do cases end up in court? In criminal law, as it says on the screen, this is done by the CPS. In other words, it's an organisation that is a government run organisation called the Crown Prosecution Service. And as it says, it's done on behalf of the state. In other words, you don't, as a private individual, bring criminal cases. That is done by the state. So the police will pass the evidence on to the CPS and they will make a decision as to whether or not to go ahead with the case against somebody. Because of this, when you see cases referenced, and you'll see a lot of these over the next two years, you can identify criminal cases relatively easily because the majority of them will start with the letter R, as you can see in bold on that screen. So here we've got a criminal case that is R V Woolen. 
Now, we see that and we know that this must be a criminal case because the R stands for Regina, which is Latin for Queen, because she's our head of state. So if you're prosecuting on behalf of the state, it is in her name you are doing it. So it is R versus and then the person who is um, who the case is against. So in this case, it was a man called Mr. Woolen who had been charged with murder. And so the case is the state versus Mr. Woolen. OK, that is how it works. This is different in a civil case because in a civil case, it's not the state that is starting the case. Civil cases are between individuals who have issues with each other. So, for example, it could be neighbours. So what we do here is we reference the cases by the surnames of the people involved. So in this instance, we can see in bold the word Mullen. That is because the person who brought this case, who started this case, was called Mullen. That was their surname. So that's the person who brought the case first. And then we have versus and then we have the person surname that they're bringing the case against. So Mullen is the person who is claiming they are versus Richards because that's who they're claiming against. So that's how you tell the difference between criminal cases and civil cases when they are referenced. And you will notice a lot of this because you'll see this type of um, situation in your unit one, your civil law unit, and then you'll see the RV um, in your criminal unit. So it's your turn to have a go now. So please pause when you are ready and see if you can separate these without going backwards in the PowerPoint unless you really need to into civil cases and criminal cases. Unpause when you're ready. Welcome back. So now on the next slide, we have the answers in a nice colour coded jazzy slide. So there we go. So if we look at the key in the bottom, civil in this instance is blue and criminal in this instance is red. So what we've got is R v Martin. So that is a criminal case. R v Cole, another criminal case. R v Robinson. And that's the other criminal case. Then we've got Balfour versus Balfour, which is a civil case. Now, the reason the names are the same, they're not suing themselves. It's because they were a married couple who um, one was suing the other. And then at the bottom, we've got Alcock versus Chief Constable of West York Yorkshire Police. This is somebody with the surname Alcock who was suing uh, a specific police force. OK, so there we go. We have got civil and criminal cases. I hope you got them right. So what do we call the people who are involved in a trial? Now, trial is the same for whether it's a civil case or a criminal case, but the process is very, very different. So to begin, the person who brings the case in a civil case. So, for example, in our Mullen versus Richards, we would refer to Mullen as the claimant. OK, so Mullen is bringing the claim. She's the one that's suing. And so Mullen is the claimant. Now, Mullen versus Richards. Richards is the defendant because Mullen is suing Richards. So that is the defendant. If you are talking about a criminal case because it's the state and not an individual, the state, the CPS, hires lawyers who are prosecutors in order to fight the trial in court on behalf of the state. So that's why we refer to the person who will be um, conducting the side, trying to get them convicted, the prosecutor. The person who the case is against is the defendant. So that's the same whether it's a civil case or a criminal case. So as you can see, it's the person who's bringing the, the case that has a different name. So that's what you've got to remember. Another thing that you need to remember, because everybody gets this wrong all the time, is how to spell claimant and defendant. Um, it's not claimant, it's not defendant, it is claimant and defendant. OK. So now your chance to put that into practice. So if you can just pause the slide and decide what we are going to call hero in this instance. Welcome back. So the answer that you would have been looking for is the claimant. 
Again, pause, decide and unpause when you are ready. Welcome back. So what we would call Jonty, the answer to that is the defendant. Now, another thing that is a common misconception amongst people is that all trials end with guilty or not guilty. That is a criminal court decision. So once you get to the end of a trial, the decision that is made in a criminal court would be either guilty or not guilty. They are the only two decisions that can be made. So when you've heard all the evidence, they decide, the jury decides guilty or not guilty. This is different in a civil court. It's not about guilt or innocence. It's about who is responsible. So the legal term for that is liable. So the decision that comes at the end of a civil trial, and it would be by the judge in this case because there's no juries. So the judge would either decide that you are liable for the damage and injury or not liable for it. So that is a very common misconception. People put guilty or not guilty quite often. So you've got to be really careful in civil cases. You've got to be really careful with that. Now, if you are going to win any case, whether it's civil or criminal, you are going to have to provide more proof that you're right or that your side is correct than the other side. But the levels of proof that you have to provide are different depending on whether it is a civil or a criminal case. If it's a criminal case, then the level of proof is beyond reasonable doubt. In a civil case, it's different. It's on the balance of probabilities. What I'd like you to do now is just pause the PowerPoint and jot down what you think the difference is between those two levels of proof. And also, as it says, why do you think that there is a difference? Welcome back. So with beyond reasonable doubt is a much higher level of proof than on the balance of probabilities. If you think about the skills of justice that we saw on one of the other slides, on the balance of probabilities literally means that those skills are just slightly tipped in one direction or the other. So it's just they're not completely balanced. One side is slightly higher than the other. Now the slightly higher side would be the one that wins in a civil case. That's all that's required. In other words, if you think of it in terms of numbers, in terms of percentages, you just need to be 51% to 49% and you will win. In a criminal case, it's really different. They say beyond reasonable doubt. That requires a very high level of proof. In other words, there can't be any reasonable doubt that the person committed whatever crime it was. The reason that they have such a different level is because in criminal cases, you get a criminal conviction and also your liberty is at stake. In other words, you might be sent to prison. That doesn't happen in civil cases. It's not about sending you to prison at all. So that's why they require a much higher level of proof. So what is the outcome? So Outcome doesn't mean the, the um, result as in guilty or not guilty, liable or not liable. It means if once the decision has been made, what happens to you? Again, this is very commonly miscon uh, uh, very common misconception. Everybody just talks about being sentenced. In civil cases, that's not what happens. So in criminal cases, that is exactly what would happen if you are found guilty. So if you are found not guilty, then obviously you walk out of court and you carry on with your life. If you're found guilty, then you will be sentenced. The judge in the case will decide what sentence to give you. And there are a range of sentences from life imprisonment down to what's called an absolute discharge. In civil cases, it's not a sentence. In civil cases, if you are found to be liable, then you will pay damages. In other words, that will be compensation of an amount of money decided by the judge that you will pay to the other party. In terms of the courts, we use different courts. 
So if you are bringing a criminal case, that will be heard in either the magistrate's court or the Crown Court. Now, again, on TV, the Crown Court is the one that you tend to always see. But actually, statistically speaking, less than 5% of cases are heard in the Crown, criminal cases are heard in the Crown Court. Most cases are in the magistrate's court where you don't have juries. You'll have a panel of three magistrates sitting instead. In civil cases, the courts that hear the cases are county court where the majority of claims will be heard. And then for the higher level, more serious cases, you have the high court. In this area, in Sunderland, for example, we have a magistrate's court. So that's the one um, that is on the corner near where all of the fountains are um, and near Primark. That's the magistrate's court in Sunderland. We don't have a Crown Court in Sunderland. Our nearest one is in Newcastle on the Quayside. Same thing at the bottom. We have a county court, which is in John Street or Fawcett Street. It's one of those streets. Um, and it just looks like quite an unassuming Victorian building. But we don't have a high court in Sunderland. Again, that would be on the Quayside in Newcastle. Newcastle has what's called a combined court. So in other words, it has a magistrates, crown, county and high court all in one building and it does everything in one building. Okay, in Sunderland, we have magistrates and county court. If we go for serious cases for Crown Court or High Court, they will go to Newcastle. So it is now your turn to put into practice everything that you have learnt today. So please pause this and PowerPoint and have a go at changing that story, changing all the key terms in that story into a criminal case. welcome back. Now, hopefully you weren't fooled, but some of you may have fallen into the misconception trap. You must take out John because remember, it wouldn't be an individual that starts the case. So you would say the CPS appointed a prosecutor to bring the case against Dora, the defendant that can stay the same. The case was heard in there and then you'd have to change that to magistrate's court because that's the lower court. It was decided that Dora was guilty on um, beyond reasonable doubt. In the end, Dora was sentenced to 15 hours of community service. So you could substitute any sentence there. How did you do? Please make any corrections that you need to and then move on to the next slide. So have a read of this. You're involved in a car accident. It turns out the other driver was speeding and texting on the mobile phone when they crashed into you. You have been injured and you've broken two ribs and you have a concussion. You've had to have three weeks off work while you recover and your car repairs are gonna to total 5,000 pound. So is this a civil or a criminal case? Jot down what you think the answer is. Now, in this instance, you could have been both right and wrong at the same time, depending on what you said, because the answer is that it's both. We deal with civil and criminal laws separately in law here. So if we were looking at this scenario in unit one, we would only be dealing with the civil parts of it. If we were looking at this scenario in unit two, we would only be dealing with the criminal parts of it. But it's important to note that situations can include both so that you don't get confused by that. So in this instance, the speeding and the texting on the phone could lead to a criminal charge of careless driving or dangerous driving. Whereas the person who has suffered broken ribs, concussion and um, damage to the car, they will make a civil claim to get compensation in the form of damages for that. So it would be two separate. You have to pull the, part, the bits apart. The CPS would decide whether to prosecute for the dangerous driving and then the individual involved uh, who was in the car accident would decide whether to sue the other driver for compensation. OK, so they're two separate issues in the same case and you can do them both at the same time. 
Um, so you can, the CPS can be pursuing a criminal case while you sue them for damages, um, but they are done separately in the separate courts. So what I'd like you to do now is to put into practice everything that you have learned today. So what you need to do is you need to go away and you need to find an example of a criminal case online. Newspapers are very good. Places like The Guardian Online um, are very good for um, this. The BBC News as well has a lot of cases that you can look up. So you want a criminal case and a civil case. And then you are going to explain how you know that this is a criminal case and how you know the other one is a civil case. Um, using the keywords and terminology that you have learned in this lesson. Please feel free to email me your answers to check them if you wish. If anybody has any questions or concerns, there will be a drop in session in June. Please look out for the dates of that when you can pop in and see me and ask me about any of this. I look forward to seeing you all in September. Have a nice summer.